Hey, it's Mike here, and today, per request of you guys, I'm gonna be responding to the Telegraph's Dangers of Veganism article. Yes, a good old-fashioned article response, and this one has you know, a lot of the classic fear-mongering and some other points as well, but we're talking about literally the protein point. Yes, in 2024, we're still talking about that, even in the age of swole vegans and vegans flipping cars, which is ridiculous, but also, of course, things like B12, omegas, bone fracture, depression, and more. Yeah, it's pretty much openly a vegan diet hit piece. Of course, I'm gonna respond totally taking the bait. And yeah, they do cite a lot of things without sources. They still do loosely cite some things with some sources. So we're gonna respond with twice as many scientific sources, because that's how we roll, and let's just roll. I wish the Telegraph showed how many shares articles got so I could see if crap Wrapping on vegans is still as popular as it has been in recent years in terms of how many people are reading the article and sharing it. But yeah, it's, it's still probably the case that this is a popular way to go. It's a good way to get clicks. It makes me wonder how far back does pooping on vegans go? I mean, does it go all the way back to the original telegraph people used to electronically send the first messages? Oh joy, my friend Todrick is sending me a telegraph. It saith, how doth one know is vegetable fed? Oh, don't worry, ye will tell you. <laughs> what an original joke. I'm responding, and don't forgetteth the ghastly pallor, my lover Todrick. I mean, my friend Todrick. I'll be right there, wife slave. But let's get to the actual article. I had the idea of having AI read it in some sassy voice, but every time I do anything AI related, like a hundred people unsubscribe and get really mad, so. I guess I'll just <laughs> read the quotes myself. They basically do some framing saying like, yeah, vegans say that it's all healthy. It's framed with weight loss and heart health and referring to Game Changers as a cult documentary pushing a narrative that going plant-based is good for the planet and your own well-being. And I should say right there is the only time they really mention the planet and it's probably because they have no grounds to even try to attack a vegan diet on the planet. I mean, here's a pretty recent Oxford University study where essentially you have a two thirds lower impact in most areas on a vegan diet in terms of dietary footprint. Print. But moving on, they say, quote, there are currently an estimated two and a half million vegans in the UK, a figure which has nearly doubled in the past 12 months alone. Now that might seem like a neutral sentence, but they're using it to a frame how much people are being harmed by a vegan diet in a second here. And then also I feel like they're trying to use it just as like a fear stat for all the meat eaters eating like, oh no, the vegans are doubling. However, I would say it's not a cited figure and it's very likely that they're just looking at different surveys that surveyed different populations. So it's funny that when people are trying to poo poo on veganism, they're either saying, oh, veganism is totally dying. All these restaurants are closing, blah, blah, blah. Or when they're trying to fear monger, it's a veganism that's doubling year over year. Uh, I don't think either of those are accurate. <laughs> And moving forward, they say, quote, the emerging concerns range from a heightened risk of diseases relating to the skeletal and nervous system to conditions such as hemorrhagic stroke. Yeah, because they have to read all the articles like this. <laughs> I'm joking, we'll cover the actual stroke stats and how that's a misleading claim as well in a second. But it's just funny how at no point here do they cite any of the dozens of studies showing improved health outcomes on a vegan diet, whether we're talking about randomized control trials or just looking at populations. I mean, you know, like for example, this meta-analysis showing vegans having a lower cancer risk. Oh, where was that one? I couldn't see it with my head literally in the sand or like the 50 to 80% lower diabetes risk we see across multiple studies. Uh, oh, I missed that one because I was too busy crying over my vegan ex and now my eyes are too covered with tears to open PubMed. That's direct quote from the author. A quick little tangent here, uh, this David guy who wrote this article, ironically actually wrote an entire article about anti-aging dude, Brian Johnson, talking about erections and heart health, etc. And not once in the whole article did he mention that Brian eats a vegan diet. So he's trying to erase it where it has a positive influence. And then of course, writing an article like this. So you know, I don't know what he has against vegans, but clearly he's not one. And yeah, since he relies on some anecdotes in this, I might as well just throw one funny anecdote that I love. And that is from Forks Over Knives, one of Dr. Esselstyn's heart disease patients, uh, being able to get erections again uh, after what seems to be years. Here he is. Anthony and the other male patients also noted a another change. When you're young, when you're a teenager, you see uh, a female and so on, it gets kind of excited. And uh, the first reaction physically, you know, it gets uh, attention, you know, raise the flag, I call it. This happened to us, uh, all the other 
uh, Dr. Esselstyn's, uh, I call them uh, all the guinea pigs. The flag still rises. Sometimes you just gotta raise the flag. It's probably one of my favorite clips of all time. Anyway, it's really the shtick. Get people who don't like vegans, which is most people, to come and click on your article, get some ad revenue, etc. But let's see what else they have to say. Yes, they are actually bringing up protein. They cite this functional medicine guy, Dr. Jeff Mullen, who says we're not designed to be vegans. There's some big macronutrients and micronutrients missing if you're just eating a vegan diet. He does say you can get plenty of proteins on a vegan diet, but you know, if there's a concern you're just not getting off of the right kind and that plant proteins just aren't processed in the same way as animal proteins oh yeah it doesn't process them directly into artery plaque we'll talk more about digestibility in a second but i should just mention you know functional medicine what even is that maybe there are some good practitioners out there but you know even wikipedia itself just rips functional medicine a new one with quote functional medicine is a form of alternative medicine that encompasses a number of unproven and disproven methods and treatments it has been described as pseudoscience quackery and at its essence a rebranding of complementary and alternative medicine so just a warning again maybe they're not all bad but it is worth mentioning it's the year 2024 and i would say it's the era of the swole vegans i'm probably not the first person to say that no there's no protein limitation on a vegan diet no, you can believe what your eyes show you right in front of you but we will get to some studies as well. They say, well, dietary protein can be sourced from plants. Plant proteins are not only 50 to 70% less digestible than animal proteins, but according to the WHO, animal proteins are regarded as complete protein, meaning they have higher biological value. And the power of research is that you can always find the source, especially if somebody's a bad writer. So they took these claims from this anti-vegan opinion piece, actually rewording two sentences into one, not an original thought in their brain, misinterpreting the 50 to 70% that was in parentheses as 50 to 70% less comparatively and to those authors yeah that digestibility score in addition to being unsighted uh, you can see the very next citation in the study yields this chart with a 91 and 95 percent digestibility score for wheat and soy so very poor journalism and now for a quick break with today's sponsor, Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic. This is a prebiotic and a probiotic with 53.6 billion active bacterial cell units in this just single capsule from 24 different strains, which are scientifically shown to support various areas of health, including gut barrier, gut immunity, digestive health, heart health, skin health, and more. And sometimes I wonder if the people who hate on vegans are just misplacing the pain that they feel through constipation. <laughs> I'm kidding, everybody has poo poo problems. I feel bad for people with any of these issues and obviously eating more fiber, etc., is a great angle, but also there are strains in seed that multiple studies have shown helps with constipation. For example, this randomized control trial on people who have issues in this area, but they were able to increase the frequency of their defecation, as well as the ease of expulsion of such defecation. So clearly there was an effect. And my partner, Lindy and I have been taking seeds since 2021 for several years now, and she's just obsessed with it. And so yeah, if you would like to also try it, you can click the link below and use the code Mike25, that's M-I-C 25 for 25% off your first month supply. All right, back to it. And the uh, whole complete protein thing is very 90s. Uh, we eat a varied diet. We don't have to rely on a single source of protein. You know, typing in a day of eating into a chronometer, which is a nutrition tracker, all of the essential amino acids are easily reached. And it's also ironic to be really obsessed with getting really high amounts of these certain amino acids when ones like leucine can boost your IGF-1, which can fuel certain stages of cancer growth and spreading. I mean, plant protein does not boost IGF-1 like animal protein, according to this study, for example. So when they say a recent study examined the adequacy of vegan diets in terms of macronutrients through surveying the nutritional intake of vegans across Europe, finding that vegans consumed the least total protein. And of course he didn't cite this European study, but I found it. For some reason he left out things like, quote, although intake of some essential amino acids in vegan diets is recorded lower than non-vegan diets, where vegan diets include a variety of protein foods such as grains and legumes, insufficient intake is not expected. Moreover, plant protein is associated with lower diseases like cardiovascular disease, slower cancer growth, and lower mortality rates. However, to contrast that, they mentioned a study in their review where 27% of meat eaters went over over the acceptable amount of protein consumption, which can be related to various disorders like kidney, cancer, and heart. 
as you likely already know, or are deeply in denial of watching this, uh, saturated fat from animals or whatever raises LDL, and that is bad cholesterol, which is causally linked to atherosclerosis from the best research that we have. Literally Mendelian or genetically randomized studies. And we can worry about plant protein dynamics and all that, or we can just look at the actual muscle mass of people eating plant versus animal protein like this study did, and they found that it was the amount rather than the source being plant versus animal protein that determined muscle mass in middle-aged adults who have worse protein digestion than younger people, so yeah. But we're still talking about this because anti-veganism sells. Anyway, on to the next one, which is B12. Back to our functional medicine doctor. He says, we do quite a lot of blood testing, and when I see a blood panel, I can always tell that it's a vegan straight away because the lipid profiles are normally really good, at least admitting that, but vitamin B12 and iron levels are always in their boots. So we have an anecdotal claim about B12 and iron from this functional medicine doctor, but we have actual research on this topic, looking at vegans, comparing blood work, versus people that eat meat. And we really have a growing mountain of newer research showing that vegans have adequate B12 and iron, and from certain studies are even trending with higher B12 levels than the people that eat meat. This is due to, thankfully, getting enough fortified food with B12, as well as taking supplements like multivitamins, etc., which people act like is some major flaw when the vast majority of people take some type of supplement anyway. And next we get on to fish and DHA, uh, everyone's favorite subject here and we have the same doctor being like, oh, well, the plant-based omegas aren't as great, blah de blah they don't convert. And then we have an anecdote of Anne Hathaway quitting her vegan diet, and she says that she apparently had a piece of fish and felt like her brain was rebooting, which first of all, this is a bit of an older story, but then it's also like raw alignment, Elise Parker, you know, having that bite of fish and then immediately like her whole world just like lights up. All of her health ailments are immediately cured, everything like that, but we know that biology works a certain way and DHA in the brain is part of the fatty structure of your brain. Like you're not just getting some fish in your stomach and immediately transmuting DHA into the structure of your brain to the point that it's making some major well-being difference. No, this is clearly something else going on. I hate to say there's a placebo effect, but there's no biological explanation that doesn't involve neurotransmitters telling your brain a certain story. And as far as Anne Hathaway goes, she talks about being raw vegan, who, you know, they tend to eat less calories. And then we also have, you know, claims of her eating two oatmeal bars in a day. Uh, like clearly she was not eating a good diet, a balanced diet by any means on a vegan diet. You know, I always talk about the social pressure to quit being vegan. When she recalls this time that she had this fish, she was in Iceland with Matt Damon. She says she was the only woman and the only vegan and just ended up caving and having fish. And I just think about the sheer amount of suggestibility that these people likely have because they're exposed to people constantly being like, oh my God, how are you even alive being vegan? Oh, you gotta have this, you gotta have this, here's some fish. Um, but it's funny that no one ever comes after vegetarians really hard for not getting long chain omegas. It's virtually in no articles. There's no vegetarian uh, hit articles that are talking about DHA that are as popular at least. But as I always say, they're in the same boat, the non-fishing boat. They are not getting this fish-based DHA. And then final point, most of you already know that fish are getting this DHA directly from algae. They aren't making it. And and so you can just take algae supplements. But yeah, millions of vegetarians across the world not eating DHA from fish. That's totally okay with these people. You know, they're still eating some animal products, so everything must be fine. But then of course, vegans, it's like the end of the world because they're not eating them. Anyway, moving on. Let's jump forward to the stroke section here. And yeah, if you read their sentence closely, they're saying, oh, there's a 20% increased risk of hemorrhagic stroke for vegetarians and vegan, so yeah, this isn't even a vegan specific claim here, and it's really ironic because they took this you know, from the Epic Oxford data, which shows lower disease rates in a ton of areas like ischemic heart disease, you know, essentially our number one leading killer on the planet, that is lower. Also diabetes found lower cancer rates, things like that completely ignored. Uh, it's just funny to be like, oh, good thing, good thing, good thing, good thing. Oh, the one slightly bad thing. Uh, let's, that's, that's the thing I'm gonna put in my, oh, I think it's called cherry picking. <laughs> and next really quickly, they talk about the bone issue and that increased bone fracture thing, which we've heard a ton about in the last few years here being like, oh, vegans have higher fracture, vegetarians have higher fracture. 
And in this case, they're once again, particularly pointing to not getting enough nutrients. It's not enough calcium, et cetera. But we can see from the studies that if you're looking at people who are a BMI over 22.5, which is really not that heavy, then we don't see the relationship anymore. And that leads me to think, hey, well, perhaps there is this section of very underweight people that happen to be on a vegan diet. You know, and they'd be more prone to getting fractures than people that are below that cutoff, but also slightly heavier. So we might have some wildly different BMI distributions that will lead to different results, but it's clear from my recent video looking through the data that if you adjust for BMI, there's no difference in bone density across study after study after study. We even had another recent study comparing vegan bone density to non-vegan bone density, and it was the same. So yeah, of course I have a whole video on that if you wanna look at it. We go study by study anyway. On to the next one, which is depression. Of course, I gotta pull that card. You know, with this statement about how a review found that vegetarian or vegan diets are linked to higher rates of depression, potentially due to deficiency. Forgetting that a lot of these depression studies say, hey, this is association. It could be reverse causation. For example, uh, people who are depressed go on a vegetarian or vegan diet. And that is the case where again, they're lumping vegetarians and vegans together. But a more recent Australian actual vegan comparison study found that vegans had the lowest depression and anxiety scores with the meat eaters depressive symptom scores landing them at an average of slightly depressed. So it depends on the data set, depends on the area, and also whether you're actually looking at vegans or vegetarians who of course eat dairy and eggs, etc. And next they shoot after mock meats here saying, oh, they're ultra processed, therefore they must be bad. Now this researcher says that rather than being made with ingredients such as lentils, plant-based meats tend to be manufactured with highly refined chemicals combined with ingredients such as emulsifiers and stabilizers. And I will say, yes, it is the case that you can, on a vegan diet, grab a nice lentil or black bean burger, or you can grab a more processed burger. You have the choice, just like how on a meat-based diet, you might be able to choose from some deep fried processed meat or some other meat, but it is the case that there's a lot of fear mongering around this. Some of those stabilizers or emulsifiers are actually, like lecithin, shown to lower cholesterol, you know, and people will fear monger around ingredients that are just more complicated words for fiber, for example, like methyl cellulose. Strong evidence of that eating even these more processed vegan burgers will put you in a better position than eating the animal-based burgers. We have the randomized control trial known as the swap meat trial, which found that the vegan burger group had better cardiometabolic biomarkers better heart health indicators. And I will say, yes, some of these saturated fat contents are quite high in those other burgers, but still the results are better for things like LDL cholesterol. And then again, it is the case where you can just reach for the healthier lentil burger as well. But the main point here is that you can take the animal out. The animal doesn't have to die. You have these burgers which are regularly now passing blind taste tests, people thinking that they're the animal-based meat when they're not, and they still give you a better heart markers. In the end, I think it's fair to say that there are dangers associated with every diet, you know, potential pitfalls. However, when we're comparing those pitfalls and actually looking at disease rate comparisons, especially the most important ones that kill the most people and cause the most disability, et cetera, like diabetes, cancer, and heart disease, uh, the risk of those is lower on a vegan diet, yet they're twisting the narrative here to make it seem like, oh, be really afraid of a vegan diet, don't even go on that. Keep eating meat, just keep eating those animals. So yeah, as long as it's still worth it to pay people to write articles that are anti-vegan to get those clicks and that advertising money, I'm gonna still be here responding to these, especially as you guys ask me to, you know, just email me being like, respond to that please. And uh, I probably will if it's something that's from a large enough outlet, etc. And then of course, if you would like to try Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic, you can click that link below and use the code Mike25 for 25% off your first month's supply. And of course, let me know down below what you thought about this article or if you'd add any points to what I was responding to. And as usual, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.